Just if I can get my teeth in gear, yeah. this is an update on our satellite navigation system. A lot of people have asked about this this um, device, what satellite do we use? We actually did a video. Um, when we just got it, hadn't we? Yeah, just short, shortly after we got it. And the thing about doing a, a video about something you've just bought is you don't know how well it works really. No, it's, no. And... Um, so what I thought I'd do is give you an update on this. The video, incidentally, is about here. Right, okay. So uh, have a look at that video after this, uh, this video, and we'll give you an update how we're getting on with this. So, I mean, the first thing to say about... Oh, try not to show you where we live. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. She's so clever, isn't she? Yeah. And uh, we've got a, we've got a route in there, so um, I can't show you the the screen. I can't show you the map, unfortunately. Uh, I might be able to zoom it in a little bit low, later, but I have got some clips of us actually using it. It's actually quite a difficult thing to film, isn't it? Because you've got yeah. it on the dashboard as you're going along. So uh, yeah, I've, I've tried a couple of times. It, and you can't hold the camera still no, enough to, no. to film it. So uh, anyway, the first thing I'd say about it is it's got a really big clear screen. The previous sat nav, we couldn't see the screen quite often. No, or if I could see it, you couldn't see it. Yeah, so the, the, you can see it at, from quite an angle, you know, mm. if you hold it sort of, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, if you hold it at an angle, you can still read it. Yeah. So it's yeah. a brilliant clear screen. And, mm. and the previous one had a, a, like a hood over it That's to try right. and get the glare off it. We don't need that with this. No, it's been really good for that. Yeah. So we have had sunny days, haven't we? Yeah. Um, a criticism of it, if there are any, is the sound on it is a bit quiet. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Yeah, I've had to turn her up a couple of times, haven't I? Yeah, and even on the full volume, you can't always hear it. I no. mean, you'll think you'll hear that sometimes on a sat-nav. You hear something going, bing, bong. Yeah. <laughs> in the background. <laughs> and uh, it does, it, we'll come on to that a little bit later, but it's, I, I would like the volume to be a bit higher on it. I think you can hook it up to your radio if you want to, but then you can't listen to your radio, but there you go. Yeah. The other thing I would say about it, it gives you clear, timely directions. They are all always seem to be in time, don't they? Mm -hmm. um, you, the old sat-nav always seemed to be, turn left here, and you think, what, what back there? Back there, yeah, it was a bit... Was and the, a, one in the one in the car is bad for Oh, the one, the one in the car is always seems hopeless. to be a bit too far behind yeah that's right yeah. i think what we'll start doing is we'll start using this in the car yeah because yeah. the the one in the car is now five years old and i think five years on a sat satellite nav is is probably about its lifetime yeah i, I think you've gone off there i've gone off yeah okay i'll put it down <laughs> put it down yeah. <laughs> oh i just wanted to say the if i just show you this this is the mounting system the it's a sticky it feels sticky um but this is an an um what do they call it an anti anti-slide thing and you put that down and well you're not gonna be able to see it down here it won't move uh, it really is quite a nice thing and that's a mm. Garmin one I, I'll put all the links in the description below so you can have a have a look and check those out and what it's got is like a bracket at the back and you can take the sat nav off it's sort of the, take the sat nav off just give you an overview of that and it's got like a, a ball socket uh, clips back in there really good idea My, it, it's much better than trying to mount it on the actual holder thing like we started doing or even on the windscreen uh, because it's nearer to you yeah yeah right so what else have I got on my list it's really useful if you leave it switched on you know as you're going along what do you mean even if you haven't planned a route even if yeah. you haven't planned a route yeah because um well for traffic alerts and things like that and you seeing it instantly where you are yeah 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 it it, it beeps and it, it bongs and, and everything as you're going along so it does warn you so even if you know where you're going it's actually very useful just to leave it switched on um voice commands <laughs> yeah um <laughs> we you like a lot of sat navs, you can switch it on and you can say, you click, I'm going to click on where to. No, no, I'm not going to click on where to. Would you do it? I forgot how you do it eh? No, I know what you do. Yeah, you, say, you say a command, don't you? You go, well, Mrs. Sat Nag. Say a command. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you can then say, find place. Say the name of a place. 
uh, Tesco's and it's processing it says processing did you say say the name of the place <laughs> Main menu. in theory <laughs> it works okay it's easier actually I think if you do a campsite isn't it should we try that why don't you just try find a town find a town what town in United Kingdom Bolton did you say Oldham <laughs> No. <laughs> Why can't you? Know? It's a try with all these voice commands. They tend to be like this. Yeah, it some it sometimes works, and it's not going to work on camera, is it? No, no. Back. What town in United Kingdom? Um, Ormskirk. Did you say? Ormskirk? Ah, you see. W one. One. Would you like to begin navigation? Yes. Start new route or add as next stop. Start new route. Please drive to highlighted route. And then you're on. Yeah, your, and you're on your way. Yeah. yeah. So it, it sort of works. Um, it's probably my voice or accent or something. We don't tend to use it because we tend to put the, the thing in there. And you've found that very quick, haven't you, when you... Enter yeah, the destination. I've, I've found, especially for finding um, Caravan and Motorhome Club sites, I mean, I've, all I've done sometimes is just put the first two letters in. Yeah. Right, so where to? Yeah. Going to UK club site. Yeah. Uh, so just wait for her to sort, sort herself out. She tells you the nearest ones to yeah. you. We'll see, we're Bunry at the moment. Yeah, point one mile. And I think if I just do C U, there, I just had to do C U. Yeah. Clud and Moor, there we are, 70 yeah. miles. You can filter sites by amenities if you're looking, you know, one has to have a toilet block or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. That calculates. I'll leave this in real time. We're eight feet above sea level. Yeah, so she's ready now. And she's ready, tells you the route A82, A9, B9. Please drive to highlighted route. B9006. Then Clodden Road. Yep. So that, yeah. Yeah. And I, it's just so quick. Whereas before, the previous one, I had to go find town or postcode. Then I had to go to all UK campsites and then hope that the campsite I wanted was in the list. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a bit of a faff. But that, I've been really pleased with that. Yeah. Um, problems we had with it? The only problem I had. Well, so finding attractions, um, I found that was easy for places like Fort George, um, Urquhart Castle, things like that. All yeah. I really needed to do was put F O R T G, and it found Fort George. Yeah. But uh, if it was a, if the name of the place was the same as the name of a town, like Bewley Priory, she had a bit of a problem with. Yeah. And gave me a list of Bewley Road, Inverness, Bewley Road. <laughs> So, All the yeah, in, yeah, in it, the country, it, yeah. It, if, if, if it's a sort of a, a play, I suppose you might find the same with Lancaster or something like that. Yeah. There are a lot of roads with it. So yeah. I found that a bit bit. This is probably why you need to go through the menu to say find town or put postcode yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, but to, because we were near a lot of these things like Fort George at the time, yeah, yeah. And I just put Fort G and, and it, she it found works, it. And it yeah, comes up. yeah, yeah. The only problem I've had with it is it actually stopped talking to us. I think we had a bit of a sulk. Yeah, we don't really know what that was. No. Maybe she had nothing to say. No, so... We were on the M74, and maybe there was just nothing... Nothing for her to <laughs> talk about, I don't know. She did suddenly burst into life, so I don't know what yeah, all that well, was about. Well, it didn't suddenly burst into life, I restarted it. Oh, did you restart it? Yeah, my camera is slip, sinking down. I thought it was sinking down. There. Yeah. <laughs> Sink... My little GoPro thing was going down, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what's going on there yeah right so um so uh, yeah i rebooted the uh the sat nav and it, it came back, back yeah. I, mean, I haven't had it since so uh, no no maybe, maybe we've got some weird setting by mistake laptop's gone off <laughs> yeah the other thing is uh it starts up very quickly doesn't it yeah when you switch it on and also it finds the satellites very quickly i mean the old one was getting a bit 
I don't know whether because satellites are moved or whatever. Yeah, just switch it on. It's going to acquire in satellites, uh, and it, it's it's done. That's, it's that's done. basically it. Yeah. Yeah, and you're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Take it off of my map. Sometimes it's sort of is waiting for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so to pl to plan a route is I found me and especially if we're going to a campsite is very quick. Yeah. The see if I can show you this. Yeah. So that's the menu that you get when you're planning a route, and you've got on there you've got address. Let me hold that a little bit longer. So you've got address, uh, you've got campsites, you've got certificated club sites, UK club sites, European club sites, you've got TripAdvisor, you've got custom PR, POIs. Now I've loaded that with the camping and caravanning club sites. Uh, you've got history, so there's a, a history page. Let me show, whoops. Let's show you that. Yeah, so you've got history, you've got categories, you've got favourites, uh, ASCII, uh, camper contact, and trailers parks. Let's just show you that. And trailers park, I think, is quite useful because that's places that you can park up either for the day, and some of them are night parking as well, and you can filter that by amenities. So you've got like various places. That you can go to Wales, Capacurig. I'd love to go to Wales, wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that's quite a useful thing. It's also got um, Foursquare, tells you about junctions. You can put coordinates in there. People have asked, can I put coordinates in there? And it. it it's oh, going to show, where, gonna show where we are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can put in, uh, you know, North 53, etc., you know, and, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Which the POI things use as their main thing for finding somewhere, don't they? Yeah, yeah. The coordinates are what, the, yeah, like you say, I won't say it again. No, no. And you've got fuel prices as well. Does that work? I've never, I don't think I've tried that. No. Looking for unleaded. That's a bit weird, isn't it? But it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. so it tells you uh, right the tell. nearest. And the cheapest. The nearest one is at Meals Cop Shell at the moment. Morrison, oh no, Morrison's are the cheapest, Morrison's at the moment. And Tesco on Scaresbrick Road. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? What's next? Oh, um, updates. Updates, updates. yes. Yeah. I don't know anything about this. Um, it, it's updated via uh, Wi-Fi, so you br just bring it into the house, you hook it up to your Wi-Fi, and it's updated. And you seem to get updates at least once a month. It updates either the map or the software, so that works really well. Some of the big, some of the big map updates are quite lengthy, yeah. but most of the updates take a couple of minutes. And it's nice that it is actually updating it all the time, you know, rather than mm. waiting. The old one was an update at the end end of the end of the year, wasn't it? And you had to download a file, didn't you? And then I had to download a file, then install the file, and this all does it via Wi-Fi, and it updates itself. So yeah. it's very, very clever for that. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot better. Um, has it taken us down any dodgy roads? The only one that was a bit well, it's because I knew it was the wrong address. Yeah. Was um, when we went to what was Cowton Mill. Now yeah. called Water Meadow. Water Close Meadows. Water Close Meadow, yeah. yeah. Um, I knew before we got there that it got the wrong address. It had got Love Lane right. instead of Mill Street. Yeah. But it's all very tight down there anyway. Yeah. It depends what coordinates have been yeah, put in. Yeah, coordinates the have obviously been put in there. Um, it's not no longer a caravan and motor club site. It's a national trust. Yeah. And they, the coordinates must take you to Love Lane that's that's what it got well it? the address for the ca the campsite is Love Lane yeah which is which is wrong anyway yeah yeah but, I so, mean I was yeah. thinking about 1920 or whatever yeah maybe, that was a lane that and you maybe could you go went down, down there and, to get in there yeah, yeah to get to the mill you probably did yeah, yeah and they built so the you other can't road. always blame the sat nav you know no. sat nav's only following orders yeah yeah but where <laughs> I was pleased with it yeah. was Clumber Park yeah 
because the previous one took us round the back and it's a it's a roundabout mm. with several exits yeah and uh, i thought that the exit the other one took us on was wrong was the wrong exit and we ended up round the back and because the gates were closed round the back you couldn't drive through clumber park estate no, no. so we had to um turn round didn't we which yeah, we, we had we the car do. on the back as well so yeah we, we did yeah. manage to yeah. You managed to do a U-turn, so that was yeah. all right. But this one took us in the right way. Yeah, yeah. So it, generally, it's worked very well. Um, yeah. For getting us there. The other question I often get is, does it follow the caravan club recommended routes? And the short answer is no. no. It can only follow the coordinates. And what it will do is it will look, obviously, as it's going along, to see if there's any low bridges and narrow width restrictions and, and that, and avoid those. So you do have to use a bit of common sense. I, I think the uh, example I can give you is um, Ashridge Farm in Ashwell. The caravan club tell you to come in from the Royston end, mm. and uh, if you follow the sat nav, it will bring you in from the Baldock end, and that takes you through the village. And the villagers have protested loudly about uh, caravans going through uh, the street, which has got car parked cars on either side mm. of the road mm. so they want you to come in from the Royston end so you really need to check um, yeah, instructions to from check the club, the website, club yeah. site before you do I mean there's nothing wrong with the road going through the village it's just tight because of parked cars all the sat nav can do is look to see is the road wide enough as it got low bridges is, or, yeah. or anything which yeah. it is so yeah, just got to use common sense. Actually, we haven't tried Mrs. Satnag going to Ashwell because we haven't been to Ashwell <laughs> since we've had her. So. No, so we'll have to try. <laughs> so we'll have to try her when we. Yes, yeah, I want to go there again. Yeah, um, we're going to try, try and get down south uh, for a, a trip next uh, spring, I think. Aren't we? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I want to. But but yeah, any Satnav, just use your common sense with it. But she hasn't taken us down. I don't remember any really narrow roads or. No. No, still seems to get lefts and rights wrong. You get <laughs> yeah, well, well, they oh, for campsites. For campsites, yeah. yeah. Sometimes she says your your destination is on the right, and no, it's not. It's on the left. But that must be the coordinates. Again, it's coordinates, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, on the right. Maybe they put the coordinates in the middle of the road or something. It doesn't know yeah, whether it's left or left right. Left or right, but yeah. most she no, thinks eighty, ninety percent of the time she's got the left and right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the camping and caravanning club sites that I've loaded in as custom uh, POI, as they're called, you can download, if you're a member, you can download those off the camping and caravanning club uh, website and you can install them. The only trouble I found with them is that when you install them, when you're going somewhere that's a, a camping and caravanning club site, and the classic is, is, I think we'll put the clip in here, is going to Sandringham. It re there it is. That was a relief, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's even got the telephone number in it. It reads the whole address. It re yeah. it says, um, well, uh, you are arriving at um, Sandringham Camping and Caravanning Club website, and it gives you the telephone number and the postcode. Oh, yeah, the, I think, the whole yeah, thing. It went, so. went postcode, telephone number. Yeah. Didn't it? I thought it might just read out the coordinates, but went but, sandring a postcode. No, don't, I don't know what that's about. It's no. bizarre. Uh, I've done some little testing on the POI files themselves, and I want to test that at some stage and by arriving at a camping and caravanning which club we can't site, do which we can't do at the moment. <laughs> no, so. No. so, but it's just a little bit weird. I mean, yeah. it works. It works. Oh yeah. Well, the other thing it does do as you're going along, it shows you where there are campsites. Yeah, yeah. So you're going driving, we're driving down the M57. Oh, there's a campsite over there. You know, it's, that's yeah, quite useful. Yeah, yeah. It does does it for ASCII sites, doesn't it? It's oh, for all sites. For all sites. Yeah, yeah whether it's CLs, CSs. Uh, yeah, no, not CSs because obviously they're custom ones, but uh, the, the the caravan club, the ASCII sites, and uh, and all other sites. I think it shows. Right. It also hooks up to a reversing camera. This um, this version, uh, you can hook it up to a dedicated reversing camera. We haven't done that, obviously, because we've got a built-in reversing camera that came with the van. So that's quite useful. Travel alerts. That has been one of the, the best improvements we've had, isn't it? Having yeah. travel alerts, because we didn't have that before. So we just arrive at 
Well, unless we had the radio on and they'd warned us about it. Um, well, there was one, wasn't there, um, on the A1 when we were yeah. leaving Outer Mill. And 29 minutes of delay were added to your route. Oh, good. Oh, good. Route. Oh, Excellent. Good. That's what we want. Good it? to know. And also, um, when we were going in Scotland, weren't we going towards Moffat? Yeah. She sent us sort of round a different way. Offers, offers an alternative route. Yeah. We um, don't always take it because we, we think, oh, well, it might have cleared by the time yeah, we get there. Yeah, but I suppose if there is a problem with traffic alerts, they're sometimes a little bit old, if you like. Yeah. You know, someone will report a traffic alert on the news or whatever, mm. and by the time you've got it, you know, it's an hour ago or something and it's been yeah. cleared. So, you know, again, you, you have to check. But it is very useful to know if there are major delays, if the M6 is closed or, or something like that. As soon as you set off, it tells you that sort of thing. Yeah, so now that, that has been a big improvement. Yeah. So yeah. we didn't have that before. Yeah. And also tells you um, it places nearby to stop, doesn't it? So you've been driving, take a break. Yeah. And it comes up with a suggestion as a service is so many miles away or yeah. whatever, doesn't that? Yeah. So that's useful. Yeah. Um, the other thing uh, I think one uh, um, viewer asked was, what's the binging and bonging? <laughs> yeah, I don't always know why it's why it's binging or. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it bing, yeah. I don't. I'm quite sure which the bing and the bong no, is. I no, think the bongs are worse no. than the bings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what it what it does is it tells you if there's a sharp curve coming up, if there's a steep um, hill, yeah. uh, if there's a narrow road, if the road narrows. Um, yeah, speed that, limits. that is good. It tells it, you about speed limits. It's also on the screen, isn't it, at the top? So if if you just glance at the screen, you can see it says narrow, yeah. narrow road, um, sharp curve, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very good for that. It's very active. And I suppose it, I'd rather have a bing and a bong than a, a voice saying, slow down, sharp, sharp curve. or. Well, the, the yeah, one in the car, he, he's always going, beware, isn't he? And <laughs> you don't jump. really know why he's... <laughs> beware! <saying. laughs> No, that's quite spooky. It's quite scary. And I mean, we did find, especially going to um, Bur near Birmingham, where there's so many speed cameras. Mm, mm. Um, the previous one was going speed camera, speed camera, and it just got a little. Bit yeah, and we're doing 50 miles an hour down down the M M6 in a 50 mile an hour yeah. uh, restricted, you know, so, with a 50 so, mile up yeah. there. It was going speed camera, speed, speed camera. camera. Anything yeah. else? Uh, don't think so. I mean, I've been quite happy with it mm. i must admit it mm. I, so when we were t talking about it I thought, oh yeah no old mrs satin egg's okay she gets us there but that is so much easier to use so much quicker just yeah. brilliant at finding places when when you're in a in yeah. the area yeah well i hope that's been useful for you because i think we've tried to be fairly honest about it it's not perfect nothing's perfect no um, but it, it is a huge improvement over what we did have yes. and we're really happy with it. And the one in the car. <laughs> <laughs> the one yeah. in the car is absolutely hopeless. It is, funny enough, it is a Garmin as well. Yeah, but I think, like you say, it's, it's just, just old. old yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But let us know in the comments what, what your sat-nav is like. Have you got a new sat-nav? How do you get on with it? Uh, interested to know. I mean, there are some really good sat-navs out there now. They've got a lot faster and a lot cleverer, I think. That's the point, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. This one is available through, the, the, again, links in the description, is available through the Caravan Club, or I'll put the, the Amazon link in there if you're not a Caravan and Motorhome Club member. Um, and it's also based, and I can all, never remember the number, it's based on a similar Garmin one. Uh, the only difference, as far as we can tell, is that this one comes preloaded with Caravan Club uh, sites and their CLs and uh, their other sites. Well the one thing we do need to add before we go is the um, because it's uh, motorhome and caravan specific you can put the height and the width in the uh, sat nav so it shouldn't take you down narrow roads and no. low, through low bridges and that sort of thing so that is an absolute must for uh, any sat nav and what I would add is I would still buy this if I bought a motorhome with a built-in sat-nav. Do you remember the Bailey sat-nav? Yes, yeah, that took us down a really scary road, didn't it? And was it in Ash... Oh, I can't remember the name Ashby of the place. Ashby Delazooch, I think it was. Uh, was it, it was somewhere, somewhere like that. Somewhere like that. Yeah. 
the road was getting narrower and narrower. Yeah, so I would I would still buy a dedicated sat nav for your caravan, your motor, um, any like this, uh, rather than relying on the built-in one. I don't think the built-in ones are all that good. I'm told, I'm, told, I, I'm told that the new, newer Bailey ones are supposed to be uh, dedicated Motown ones, but I, I've yet to see them. No. What were you going to say? All I was going to say is that you can have various profiles, can't you? Because you've got the motorhome on its own, haven't you? And the motorhome towing the car, because obviously we're longer then. Yeah, you've got different profiles on here. So you can choose between a motorhome and... A motorhome with a trailer. Yeah, and if you if and if you put in the car, car. It, and it says war warning, and it turns it basically turns off the width um, things there if you go to car. So you can use it in your car as well. Yeah. So that's what I think we'll be doing. But yeah, we like this a lot. Yeah, we do, definitely. Yeah. I also like the, when you've got the map and you've got the motorhome going along the roads. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> sure, we can't show you. <laughs> no, can't show us that because we're not, on, not moving. But no, no. no, I do like that. Yeah, so if you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. And if you haven't already, hit that notifications icon as well. Uh, and that'll give you updates and release another video. So. Right. That's it? Yep. We'll see you soon. soon. Yeah, bye, bye then. then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is a update on our sat navigator satellite. This is an update on our satellite. Oh no. <laughs>